And the brother is asking a question. He's saying that don't I think or aren't the Islamic scholars responsible for creating confusion amongst the lay people? Some people will say that you know machine slaughter is halal. Other will say no, it's impermissible. And some people will say uh, one thing is halal. Other people will say other things are haram. Um, the answer is no. The Islamic scholars are not responsible for creating confusion amongst the people. Rather, it's the people that themselves that are responsible for creating this confusion. How so? Well, the right of a scholar is to opinionate, say what he believes to be the truth from Allah Azza wa Jal. And what a lay person is supposed to be doing is not going to one scholar and then a second and then a third and then a fourth and then a four, fifth until he gets himself confused. Trying to get indulged in a matter that he or she doesn't understand to begin with. When one person says something and he is a qualified or she is a qualified Islamic scholars, scholar, he or she is saying it based on knowledge. Based on years of experience. Based on years of training. Classically, academically, the person is read in the subject. Just wait, let me finish. Let me finish, let me finish. He or she is well read in the subject. Right? If I go to a doctor, and I go to one doctor, and by the way, I have a live example of this. Somebody had this problem. I go to one doctor, and I say to him, that you know, I have such and such problem. And he realizes, okay, this is the problem. The treatment of such problem is through this course. You have to do this, 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 this. Now you go to another doctor, he, there's two ways to get this treatment. The other doctor says, you know what? The treatment is in this way. You do this, then you do this, then you do this. Then you come and then you mix up the two medications. Is it going to work? No. The answer is no. You will get your body into se severe confusion and you can get sick. So, the wajib, the, obligat the, the obligation of a lay person is that he or she goes to the local imam, the local person that's trusted in the community and asks, says, I have such and such problem, what's the answer? And that's it. No more. And that's, why, that's how you keep yourself out of the confusion because every single thing that is said is said based on hundreds of pieces, papers of research. Hundreds of pages of research. Centuries of study. Okay? You have a person that graduated from a certain school, he has centuries of scholarship behind him. And he's saying it based on the understanding of that scholarship. And then you have a third, he says the same thing. If you go to Germany, they have a certain methodology of medication. If you go to Russia, they have a certain methodology of medication. If you go ask a Russian doctor, and then you go to Germany, ask a German doctor, and you start taking allopathic, homeopathic, you know, you're going to get yourself mixed up, confused. And I, I know personally somebody that started using different types of medications, and their body literally had a breakdown. They almost died. Though each one of those medications separately was curing the problem. So they had to go through a cleansing process of cleaning their body out until they could now go to a certain one particular medication and then stick to that. So the wajib, the obligation, like for example, if you have an accountant, he tells me, you know what, sir, your taxes are supposed to be done in such and such manner. And I say to him, you know what, let me just read up on this on my own, I'll try to figure things out. And then you get yourself in a problem with the CRA. Is it your fault? Is it the accountant's fault? It's your fault because it's not your job to be reading that. Yes, you can, uh, you can acquire subjects, you can pursue subjects academically, learn, it's not a problem. Learning is always good, but when it comes to application, go to someone that is trusted within your community, if you're especially, if you're confused. If you're not confused, you realize, okay, there's two opinions that I think, uh, well, first of all, I always tell this to people, you don't necessarily have the right to think. Because just to be qualified to be able to think in Islamic Sharia, there's a lot of things that you have to have done before that. You know, a lot of us that indulge ourselves in matters of Islamic Sharia, a lot of us that do that, if we were to just say, I was to just say, you know what, tell me all the Islamic sciences that exist, that are the primary Islamic sciences, and I want you to just explain to me the titles of these sciences, not the actual science. 
most of us won't even be able to list the Islamic sciences. Right? Similarly, if you go to a doctor that's a specialist in a certain field, he might even be talking to you, and if he talks in medical terms, you're not even going to understand what he's saying. You're not even going to understand what she's saying. His brother is saying now that, uh, that it's the responsibility of the ulama to come to a common ground so that they can give one direction so that people don't get confused. Again, it's not their responsibility to do that. As I said, it is the wajib of a alim to come to a conclusion based on his own research, his or her own research. Yes, they can have common discussions amongst each other. Yes, they can. Maybe they'll come to common grounds and maybe they won't. Just let me finish. Maybe they'll come to common grounds and maybe they won't. And this is not alim to, this is not a alim today in the 21st century that's not coming to common grounds. From the time of the Sahaba. There were Sahaba that differed with one another and there were ulama. And there was one Sahabi that would you, 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 issue of does touching uh, uh, the opposite de gender break your wudu or not? One Sahabi will tell you, one Sahabi will tell you, Ibn Mas'ud, one Sahabi will tell you one thing. The other one will tell you the other thing. One will say it breaks, one will say it won't. It doesn't break. Right? If you look at even the life of the Prophet وسلم, himself, during his life, you'd find that the Sahaba differed amongst one another. The Prophet ﷺ would tell him that none of you should pray Asr, tell a group of them, none of you should pray Asr except in Bani Quraidah. So a group of them will say, no, you know what the Prophet ﷺ meant, what he meant was that we should really rush to Bani Quraidah, we get there fast and then we'll pray. Others said, no, what the Prophet ﷺ really meant was even if we miss Salah, we're still going to pray in Bani Quraidah. So one did one thing and then the other did the other thing. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't scold neither one of them. So there is something called two opinions, two positions. Okay, whether there can be two ultimate truths or not, this is an usul al-fiqh issue. And that doesn't concern any of us. Because that's between us and Allah Azza wa Jal. Either one, even if one of the alims makes a mistake, and the other one is right, and both of them go to these route, reach to this, this position based on proper routes of Islamic research, then they're both rewarded, so long as it's within the realm of differences of opinion. They're both rewarded. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, if a person of knowledge, a hakim, he does ijtihad, he searches to come to a truth, come to a position about a certain issue, and he is right in that position, then you'll get two rewards. And if a person does so, and then he's wrong, he'll get one reward. So both are rewarded. So it's not the obligation of Islamic scholars to avoid people from getting into confusion. They're doing their obligation by someone coming to them and then they're them giving the answer based on their own personal opinion, based on their own personal research. The problem is that the layman is not doing his part. And that is that you go and ask your community leader. You're, you have over here, mashallah, you have a lot of people of knowledge. You go to that one community leader, couple of, maybe sometimes you can even do two, but stick to the one that you trust most. Ask him, Shaykh, I have a question, such and such, especially when you're in a situation where you're confused, because you're throwing yourself into confusion by doing something that you're not supposed to be doing. Right? You can read and pursue the subject, as I said, academically, but in terms of practice, so you avoid yourself any confusion, you go and ask your community. In our hierarchy, who is responsible? Who is responsible to avoid the confusion for a common man? In our hierarchy, who is responsible to avoid the confusion for a common man? The reality is that, you know, as the, as the ulama of Rasul mentioned, that the, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam alike are hammalat wujuh. They carry several different meanings within it. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala chose from his wise wisdom to make things that way. So that it, so that the virtue of the people of knowledge, these people that have spent 30, 40 years studying Islam, their virtue becomes evident to people, evident to mankind. Because they haven't been, 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises in status the, pe the people that believed and even above and furthermore the people that sought knowledge. So the virtue of these people becomes evident by them constantly researching and rethinking within the realms of Sunni Islam, rethinking, you know, the Nusus and pondering and deriving and debating and, 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 and all of this is reward. For them it's reward. But as I said, if a person that is not ready to pursue this, he gets himself caught up in this, then he brings himself nothing more than confusion. Yes, you can, I keep stressing, you can pursue stuff academically. You can pursue Islamic knowledge. Yes, you can go to the halaqa. You might find one person saying one thing, another person saying another thing, a third person saying another thing. You will find that. You can pursue that. But in terms of your action, until you get to that level where you are ready to decide, till this day, I've been studying Islam for over 10 years. Till this day, sometimes I'm confused about something. I go to a shaykh that I trust, and I say, shaykh, I know I know that this madhab says this, and this, these are all their evidences. I know all their evidences. I know this madhab says this, and these are all their evidences. But he, as of yet, I just haven't been able to, I ha Allah, I just haven't gotten the tawfiq, maybe because of my own self, to understand which one of is divine truth. Which one of them is gospel truth, I do not understand. I do, what, what should I do? He'll tell me do such and such for now. When I, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes for that, difficulty for that misunderstanding in my mind as a person to be alleviated, it will become evident to me. I look at subjects that I was confused about 10 years ago, 3 years ago, 4 years ago, and all of a sudden I find that I'm able to understand now. This is from Allah Azza wa Jalla.